Okay, welcome uh, 206 and uh, 204, wait, 203, yes, 203 and 206. So, uh, here's the additional worksheet on chemical bonding. For the first question, the table, this is the answer. Can you check your answer? So, how do we write the electronic configuration? So, you need to note that electronic configuration means to put electrons into shells. Okay, the number, dot, another number, dot, another number. Okay, so first shell we can put a maximum of two electron, then eight electron in the second shell, and another eight electron in the third shell. Okay, so based on the electronic configuration, we actually get a lot of information. For example, in this question on what is the chemical formula for the ion of D? Okay, uh, since they are asking for the ion, element D is here, we need to ask ourselves what kind of ion will D form? Now, D has the electronic configuration of 2, 8, 1, meaning that it should lose one electron to form D plus. Okay? Okay, so some of you may be writing Na plus. Okay, a wrong answer, Na plus. Okay, you don't need to write Na plus because the question did not ask you to refer to the periodic table. So, so long as the question did not ask you to with reference to the periodic table or they did not ask you to name the ion of D, you do not need to refer to the periodic table, okay? By right, you should be able to answer the question with just the information provided. Okay, what type of compound is formed when B reacts with C? So, uh, let's look at this. Uh, maybe I change the color. Wow, oh, so many colors. Okay, purple. Wow, wow. I didn't know Microsoft was so cool. Okay, so when B reacts with C, let's look at B and C in detail. B is over here. Now, it has an electronic configuration of 2.6. So how should we gain stable noble gas configuration? Okay, it should gain two electrons. Okay, what about C? C has the electronic configuration of 2.8.2. So it should lose two electrons lose two electron. Okay, since one is gaining electron, this is a non-matter. Since one is losing electron, this is a matter. One gain, one lose, it is an ionic compound. Okay, now next. Here I have a few uh, common errors by student in drawing the valence dot and cross diagram for A and D. Okay, so let's look over here. A has the proton number one. Okay, and D has the proton number 11. So, based on the previous question, we know that D is a matter that will lose one electron. So, what does it tell you about A? Okay, A is actually hydrogen, and we know that hydrogen is a non matter. Okay, so matter, non matter, this forms an ionic compound. Let's look at the first question. Okay, can you tell me what is the mistake at this first diagram? Okay, the answer is that your A should not have a positive charge and your D should not be the one gaining an electron. Okay, let's look at the second one. Okay, here in the second one, D did lose one electron, whereas A did gain one electron. Okay, the charges should be correct also. So what is the mistake in this uh, diagram? Okay, the answer is that they are in the wrong direction, okay? Remember that we must always have the cation before an ion. And what happened to my words? Cation before an ions. Okay, so let's look at the last example. Okay, uh, I have the cation before the anion. So what is the error here? Okay, the error here is that over here, no need for electrons. Why is this so? Now, I'll try to um, show you the workings. You follow me step by step, then you cannot, uh, then you definitely won't be wrong. Okay, so the first step of drawing dot and cross diagram is always to identify the elements, write, write the matter first before the non-matter. Okay, and then um, draw the number of valence electron. Okay, so D, from here, we know that D has one valence electron 
A also has one valence electron. Now the difference is A is still in its first shell. So to gain stable noble gas configuration, it just needs to have two electrons. So um, remember that the metal will lose all its valence electron and because it loses one valence electron, it has a positive charge. Notice that I drew the valence electron, but that valence electron was lost. So now my metal cation should not have any valence electrons around it. Okay? Whereas the A will gain one valence electron, and then it will overall have a negative charge. Okay? Because one gain one, one lose one, the overall charges are balanced. So I do not need to add any coefficient. How do we write the chemical formula for this compound? Okay, the answer is simply D A. Okay, uh, why do we not need to have the charges inside the chemical formula of this compound? Whereas for a one A, I have the formula. Uh, I have the charge in the formula. This is because in here D A, uh, I did not um, overall. Okay, in this compound because the charges add up to zero. Okay, there's one positive and there's one negative. Overall, it should be uh, zero, a neutral charge. So that's why when we write the formula, there's no charge also. Okay, but if you are talking about one ion, the individual ion does have a charge. So that's why we must reflect it in their chemical formula. Some of you are also confused. What is the difference between ionic formula and chemical formula? Okay, ionic formula is the same as the chemical formula of an ion. Okay? So, let's look at D part 1. A also reacts with B to form a covalent compound. Okay, now note that they, ask, they say that it's a covalent compound. Draw the dot and cross diagram showing only valence electron for this compound. So, what is the characteristic of covalent compound? It is that they share electrons. Right? Now, let's look at the first diagram. What is the error in the first diagram? Okay, the error is that this is ionic bonding. Okay, I don't want that ionic bonding. Okay, I want covalent bonding. Okay, so let's look at the second one. Okay, we see that uh, I know that I need two of A to bond with B. So what is the error with this? Okay, the error is that in covalent bonding, we cannot just have a 2 in front of a compound. This tells me that there's 2 of A and B. Okay? Because it can't be separated. What? Right? Over here, in ionic compound, I can say that it's 2 of A plus, and, uh, and the, the I, other ion is like separate. Okay? Here, they are physically joined together with one sh pair of sharing electrons. And then this pair of sharing electrons is just weird because it seems like B is sharing 2 electrons with A. So how do we approach this question? Now, first, we write down what's the electronic configuration. Okay, A is very easy, just 1. B has the electronic configuration of 2.6. So, how many more electrons does each need? I know that B needs 2 and A needs 1. Okay, so which needs more must be in the center. B needs more because B needs to form more bond. B must be in the center. Okay, I know that each A will only form one bond with B. Okay, in total B needs to share two electrons because it needs to get two electrons back. So what B must do is to find another A to share with it. Now is this my final answer? No, because I need to check. Did I draw all my valence electron here? Okay, I did not. So let me just add in two more electrons such that B has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons as it should have initially. Okay, so what is the chemical formula of this compound? It is A2B. Okay, now uh, some, some of you are also confused. For Ionic compound, it is very clear, uh, there's a rule for it, which is that the cation is always written before the anion for the chemical formula. It's also cation before anion. Okay, now for the covalent compound, it's slightly more complicated. How do I know what is in front and what is behind? In general, the one in the middle is written first. 
Okay, there is one exception, which is water. Middle first. Okay, the one in the center is first, except for water. In this case, your A is actually hydrogen and B is actually oxygen. So, this is actually a water molecule. Following the water molecule, it is A to B. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's look at E. Draw the dot and cross diagram showing only valence electron for the compound formed by E and F. Now, E has the electronic configuration. Okay, let me go and find it again. E has the electronic configuration of 2.7. F is 2.8.3. 2.7. 2.8.3. Why do my words keep disappearing? 2, 8, 3. Okay, so what type of compound will they form? Why? Okay, they should form an ionic compound because this is a non-metal because it must gain one electron. This is a metal. Metal, non-metal, it should be an ionic bonding. What is the problem with this diagram? Okay, this diagram shows that they are sharing electrons, which is a covalent type of bonding. If we calculate the number of electrons around uh, F, we also see that it does not satisfy the octet uh, rule. So, how should we draw this? Okay, first, we draw the metal, which is F, with 3 valence electron. Okay, uh, I should use cross, uh, since I just follow... The other diagram. Okay, now E should have uh, seven valence electron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then F lose all its valence electron. You lose that three. It was wrong. Okay, you lose that three to give me a three positive ion. What will happen to E? It will gain one electron and have an overall one negative charge. Since F lost three electron and E only gains one, to balance the number of electron loss and gain, I need to have three of E. Okay, so this will be my final answer. How do we write the formula for this? Uh, for this compound, it is F E three. The subscript 3 belonging to the E. Okay, again, we have some common errors. Let's look at the first one. Okay, between lithium and oxygen. What is the error in this drawing? The answer is your lithium is of the wrong symbol. Lithium has a symbol of Li. Okay, now let's look at the second drawing. What is the error here? Okay, the answer is. The error lies over here, where the electrons are paired out. Okay, so if we do the working step by step again, you will notice that the electrons will never be paired out. The electrons gain will never be paired out. <coughs> okay, first lithium is in group 1, 1 valence electron. Oxygen is in group 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 valence electron. Now, again, lithium lose 1 electron. Gain one positive charge. Oxygen must gain two electron to have eight valence electron. Overall, two negative charge. Do you notice that the two electrons gain are separate from each other? They are not in a pair. If you draw it correctly, either using the north south east west rule or using the clockwise rule, your the two electrons gain must never be together. Okay. Then we balance the charges by adding the two in front. Let's look at carbon and fluorine. Okay, this is also a common mistake. Okay, tell me why is the error? Now, the error is carbon is a non-metal, so is fluorine. So non-metal and non-metal, it should be a covalent type of bonding. But here, we have an ionic type of bonding. Okay, remember I said before that carbon will never form, never form a 4 plus ion. Okay, now let's look at the other drawing. This is undeniably a covalent bonding, okay? But what is the mistake here? Okay, the error here is that 
Florine should have seven valence electrons initially. It has two, not seven. Carbon is two, not four. Okay. So fluorine should have seven valence electrons. I've only drawn one here. Let me draw in the other valence electrons. So can you check? Do you draw the valence electron of fluorine or not? Now let's look at nitrogen and magnesium. This is one of the common errors again. Can you tell me why is the mistake? Okay, again, the mistake is the same as the previous example where the electron gains should never be paired up. Again, let me draw it step by step. Magnesium, group 2, 2 valence electron. Nitrogen, group 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I have 5 valence electron. Magnesium will lose that 2 valence electron and gain a charge of 2 plus. Nitrogen will gain 3 electrons and gain a charge of 3 minus. Okay, 1 lost 2 electron, 1 gain 3 electron. Their LCM will be 6. So this one times 3, this one times 2. This will be my final answer. Notice that the three electron gain, the crosses, are all not together. Okay, so you must always, always follow the steps. Okay, just draw in sequence. Use your pencil to draw. Uh, phosphorus and chlorine. So many, so many, so many types of mistakes. Okay, let's look at them one by one. Okay, tell me what is the error here in this first diagram. Okay, the error actually lies in... Um, what exactly is the electron of phosphorus? What is the electron of chlorine? Now, if you tell me that the dot is the electron of phosphorus, then what about these electrons around chlorine? If you tell me that the dots are the electrons of chlor chlorine, then what about the electrons here? Okay, so what are the crosses? It's a mystery. Okay, so can you check? Do you use two different symbols for phosphorus and chlorine or not? Okay. Next mistake. Let's look at this. What is the error that you see? Okay, the error is actually carbon. Uh, C means carbon. What did the question ask you? Chlorine. Okay, chlorine is Cl. Okay, Cl not equals to C. Okay, a lot of students still make this error. Now let's look at the last one and the most common error. What do you notice? Okay, your phosphorus, you did not draw finish all its initial valence electrons. So I should have two more here. Okay, so this will be your final answer. Okay, if you still have any questions about chemical bonding, please email me at my email address. Okay, thank you.